Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today we are going to make some uh, some little babies, some cuttings of this Elsobi Dian Elsobi Elsobia dianthiflora. Uh, this plant is fantastic. As you know, I bought this. Uh, I'm not going to say it was that long ago. It was um, three months ago, four months ago. I can't remember. I've got a video on it. Got something on my hand, probably dirt. Uh, <laughs> and it flowered beautifully. It's not flowering right now, unfortunately. I don't even see really any buds. But as you can see, there's all kinds of little dried up buds. This one had a beautiful flower. I'll show you a photo in one of the corners there. So lovely. Oh, there's a little uh, flower bud that's uh, that's starting right here by my finger. I don't know that you're able to see that. So yeah, it flowers beautifully. Uh, it makes these beautiful runners. So I would call this a stolen and then have the uh, the little babies uh, growing off along the edges. So I just wanted to tighten this plant up a little bit. It would look nice in a hanging basket, don't get me wrong, but I just want to tighten it up and make it a little bit more compact um, and, and also to make the plant feel more bushy. Uh, and I'm going to take the cuttings and I'm going to plant them. I'm going to plant them in cute little uh, red Solo cups, little shot glasses. I will, uh, I guess I'll make a video on how I did this. I didn't really think about it uh, when I was doing it, but I think it would be kind of useful. Um, you don't always have to, to go expensive with things. You can, you can use whatever you have, whether it's yogurt cups, whether it, you need to wash them. Uh, these were from the dollar store. I think it, they were packages of 20 for $1.25, I think, at the Dollar Tree. So, and I think that they come in different colors. I think I've seen purple and yellow and all kinds of things. So you can color coordinate with your with your house. <laughs> but this is only going to be for, for a cutting. It's not going to be for anything substantial. So, um, and then with my brother labeler, I made little labels, which I've showed you before. It's not even going to come up. Alsobia dianthiflora. So I'm just going to remove the sticky backing. Not gonna do it with all of them. Oh, this one's a, a white one. Usually I buy clear. Uh, and then uh, we'll put the name on it like this. I like the the um, the brother uh, labelers because the uh, the label that comes off is kind of a plasticky kind of label, and it doesn't get affected by water. Uh, some paper ones would kind of peel off if they get a little bit wet and kind of. Uh, uh, not work very well. I have some on some zinc uh, plant tags outside and they've lasted for a few years and they are doing wonderful. Anyway, that's not what the video is about. Uh, we're just prepping this pot. You might be wondering what this string is hanging out the bottom. In time, I'm hoping to use this as a self-watering method. Uh, I bought all kinds of little plastic containers that might be reservoirs and then I sit these on top and then the little string goes into the water reservoir. And you just put water in the, the little uh, container and the plant sucks it up as it needs it. So I'll show you how I did that uh, at another time, maybe in the next video, and I've cut little drainage holes in the side. So I'll show you that later. I don't know why I'm telling you all about it now. So um, for this project, I'm going to use some ProMix African Violet Soil because uh, just Neriads seem to really like to have their, uh, their feet in something more peat mossy a little bit more acidic. So we're going to get to that. I will uh, fill up some of these with some soil and uh, I'll bring you down a little bit closer and see what's going on. Okay, so as you can see, I filled up my little pots with the uh, with the Pro Mix African Violet soil and uh, I don't know, I, I, uh, I should have done one with you. I uh, Because I have this string in there, I, uh, I held the string, I want the string to come up right up to the soil surface well, pretty well. So I'm, 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 I have the string just below the, the rim of the pot, and I held it, and then I scooped up some soil. This way, you're going to get the string all the way up to the top, and, uh, and it's going to wick the water up and bring it all the way to the surface. Rather than keeping it down at the, 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 the bottom of the pot, it's going to pull it right up, right up the side. And if your plant likes a lot of water, you might try more than one string um, and, and have it come up different sides. Uh, but but uh, with a small pot like this, one wick should be enough to keep the pot evenly moist. Uh, it could even make it too wet. So anyway, just uh, watch it and see if that's the method you're going with. 
Um, in the beginning, I'm just going to set them in a tray because I don't have enough space for for all of the uh, the plants to have their own little little um, wicking system. So with this Alsobia, as you've seen, it produces these fabulous little runners, and I'm just going to take one of these runners right off. I'm going to use some scissors. And I'm just going to cut this little stolen wherever I see fit, usually right between these little nodes, between the little babies there. And as you can see, we have little plants. And at the bottom of the plant, it's going to be hard to see, but generally you'll see little brown little brown specks. And those little brown specks are, are potential little roots that are that are starting in there. I hope I hope that it's uh, going to focus in and you can see something. Uh, this one here, you can see right at the base, there's a couple of little little speckles of uh, brown, and those are where gonna, the roots are going to be developing. So I'm going to, this is super easy, I'm going to leave about a centimeter or a half of an inch on either side of the little plant of the little rhizome runner, stolen, whatever you want to call it. Just uh, trim, trim. You can use scissors, you could use an X-Acto knife. Make sure it's sharp. You don't want to just tear them apart. Uh, you want to make it as clean as possible. And you want to use the strongest ones. As you go down the line, uh, this one here might... See how it's a lot smaller than, say, this one here? This one here is a really nice size and it's got a lot of leaves. Um, this one here is just starting out. It does have little baby roots, so it might do well. Uh, the smaller they are, the harder it is for them to 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 do their thing. Um, you want to get a nice mature one, like this one here probably will not grow. I'll probably end up cutting a little bit of it off and uh, seeing if it will grow, I'll put it in with another one. Uh, and if it survives, it survives. If it doesn't, well, I won't even notice. So here we go. I'm going to chop this one off like so. And these little ones I'm going to put off to the side and I'll plant them together and see how it goes. I'm going to chop off another runner here. And they're all loving each other and, and, and tangling each other up. So, uh, near the where the plant was, the, the main plant, I will get the biggest ones. So there we go. Chop him off. There we go. Now we got the little babies that we'll just add in around some of the bigger ones. If they grow, they grow. If they don't, that's okay. Uh, I'm going to be so happy to have um, this plant tamed down a little bit. In time, when I have a little bit more space, I'll let one go crazy. I might even grow one in a, sort of a vase environment where it'll just ramble around in circles uh, and do its own little thing. But right now, I don't have a lot of space. As you know, I'm going to be moving, and uh, I'm trying to cut down on some of my uh, my plant population, especially for when uh, people come through for showings. I don't want to look like the crazy plant guy. A lot of times people will only see that. They'll only see the clutter and not the house itself. They're not buying my plants. They're buying the structure. So here we go. I think I've got enough. I made about 10 pots. This will be perfect. I'll cut this one off just because. And this little rhizome. I just want to trim up the plant. I'm not going to keep it. There we go. See, now the plant looks much nicer. A little bit more contained. It'll probably start flowering again. I'll just trim this off. I might not use all of these. But uh, the options are there. Okay. So now we're going to get to planting. I've got all these little pots all looking so lovely. They're so cute. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to take the biggest one. I'm going to I'm going to pinch the leaves together. This is the the uh, stolen, the little excuse me, the little rhizome. And the little roots are trying to develop. Just going to use a little stick here. I'm going to do a little sideways hole because that's the way that the little rhizome is is am I getting into frame? The little rhizome is there. 
So I'm just going to plunk it down in there. And I'm going to cover it up with a little bit of soil. Can you see that? I hope so. I'm just going to firm it into place and that should be lovely. My goodness, working out with a camera on an angle is sometimes difficult for me. <laughs> Alright, put that off to the side. Let's do another one. Let's go with another big one. And uh, again, I'm just going to make a little divot in the soil long ways like this because that long stick is going to fit down in there. You don't want to plant it too deep. I just want to cover it with soil. So it doesn't look all that great. It's kind of centered in the pot. It's kind of leaning off to the side. But as, as the roots develop, that's going to that's gonna stand right up. It's going to be beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right. So here's another one. Same deal. So easy. These just nereads, uh, the, the family itself, are really easy to propagate. They just do their own thing. And, and they just are so forgiving. So let's do some of these smaller ones. These would be fantastic if you were uh, um, giving a, a, a hostess gift or something because we're getting into the holiday season. There's going to be all kinds of parties. This would be a cute little hostess gift after they, uh, they start to root. I wouldn't give them in a little red solo cup necessarily, but uh, um, starting these little babies... To give away to friends and family would be perfect. A really cute little gift. So now that we're doing the smaller ones, I'm putting two in a pot. Uh, same method. Uh, and then uh, if one of them doesn't survive, that's okay. But if both of them survive, that'll be a nice full pot. Somebody would be really happy with that one. So that little guy goes in there. And then this one can go on this side. Uh, look at how cute they are! These leaves are so cute and fuzzy. Oh my goodness. I, I really like this plant a lot. Uh, I need to get a few more Elsobias. I do have one more that I got from, um, from a friend. And uh, it's starting now to, to produce the little rhizomes. So I'm so excited. Soon, or rhizomes, stolens. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. Um, let's do one of the teeny teeny ones. Um, so... In time, I will have that one to, to do as well. But the leaves are so much bigger. I didn't realize, I thought that when you're in a group, uh, that the, the leaves would be fairly similar in size. But the other ones are, are probably four or five times as big as these little guys. And they don't have the, um, the little bit of uh, coloration to the veins. I'll show you that sometime. Okay, so I've got one more pot that I'm going to pot up. I might do a couple more after the video is over. And then uh, let's do another little guy in here. I'll keep you posted on these. In a few weeks, we'll come back and we'll look at them and uh, see how they're doing. So this is the little Elsobia. Let me raise the camera up. So now I have all kinds of these little Elsobias. I'm going to give these a little bit of a drink. Um, I'm going to do that off camera. I'm going to use my, uh, my pump here and spray them ever so carefully. Um, just to dampen the soil, um, yeah, just, I, I don't want to overdo it, I don't want to do it on camera, only because I want to be really, really careful with it. Uh, I, you don't really want to get the leaves wet, uh, that could stress them out, but as long as it's, a uh, um, uh, tempered water, not cold, not hot, the leaves should be fine, I haven't had much problem with spotting, uh, and, uh, yeah, again, in a few weeks, we'll come back to these and see how well they're doing. Maybe all of the little ones will survive. That'll be exciting. And I'm excited to, to do this too. Uh, maybe in the springtime I'll, uh, I'll do a little bit of a, a plant sale on my street. I'll let you know how that goes if, if that happens. Um, heck, it, maybe if, if, uh, if I get enough of them, maybe I'll try selling a few on eBay. But uh, until next time, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know a lot of you like these little planting videos. Um, I know I enjoy making them. Well, I enjoy doing the, uh, the, the, the task itself more than the videos, but uh, I enjoy bringing you guys along. So anyway, until next time, happy growing, everyone. Um, the light levels maybe aren't what they should be. I should have 
for my Phalaenopsis, I should have the light about here, and uh, for other ones, uh, maybe a little higher. But anyway, this, this works for me now. It's not going to kill anything. Let's grab this light.